the NAACP sees this as a major priority. It indeed is a civil rights issue. It's an access to opportunity for millions of Americans Americans that were left out of the uh, the equation altogether, but giving them the opportunity to do what is part of the American dream, to transcend your present condition and be able to find a brighter future by being given the proper tools to move from stage to stage. The NAACP sees transportation infrastructure as an absolute priority, and we work on it for so many reasons and to address so many issues in our communities. It is an absolute priority. It's crucial. It's cru- one, one of the biggest problems that poor and disadvantaged communities have is that they, they don't have the infrastructure to be able to seamlessly get to work, to school, uh, to their businesses, and even around the city to take care of their family business. Infrastructure is key. We have seen the difference in communities in which there's very little public transportation infrastructure going into what become very isolated, poor, racial and ethnic minority communities, and those that are part of a, a, a vital, seamless transportation infrastructure that allows people to get around and take care of all of their business, from work and school to, to church shopping and everything else is so important. If when you're talking about poor people, you're also talking about people that don't own cars, that don't have their own mode of transportation, and are dependent on public transportation to get just about everywhere. So it is important that we have an infrastructure policy and blueprint in place that helps empower communities by providing them with, with just that kind of robust, comprehensive transportation infrastructure. We haven't talked about the jobs that it creates in and of itself. Those jobs to to both drive the infrastructure, to build out the infrastructure, and to maintain that infrastructure. Whether we're talking about light rail, whether we're talking about uh, a more robust bus system, building uh, shelters and sheds for those passengers that are riding and maintaining that, that's all job creation. So all of that is so very, very important, not to mention the training that goes along with more bus drivers, more light rail operators, maintenance people, and everything else that also creates, and in most cases, what we're talking about under these circumstances is we're talking about union living wage jobs, and that's crucial. Jobs that are will pay a living wage, allowing people to take care of their families, that provide health care insurance, a pension plan, and other things that are, are fundamental to the American working class in our society. So it's key. It's absolutely key. Here in Washington, D.C., as D.C. moved to put in place its light rail subway system, there were initially some parts of town that were fearful that if they put subway stops in their commercial areas, that it was going to bring the wrong element of people there. But when they saw the reality of all the business that was brought into those areas that were conveniently located at those subway stops, they created new hubs of commerce right here in the city that helped uh, business people expand their businesses exponentially. It's still growing here as we see how strategically important it is for us to put those stops in all the right places, those transfer lines in places that also create a more robust uh, business uh, community. All those things are just so very important when we're moving in this direction. There are so many levels to the importance of well-planned transportation infrastructure that we're just beginning to scratch the surface. It makes such a big difference in developing communities. When we watch how jobs flowed in our society, you know, when I was growing up, jobs were moving out of the inner city area and into the suburban area. Well, the challenge was 
there was there was not a transportation infrastructure to move inner city people to those job sites out in the suburban areas, and only those that had cars were able to reach it. What that meant was it became very, very difficult to transcend your economic condition if indeed you couldn't even get to work to make the money to uh, to, to improve your family, to improve your personal life. So it, it, it's amazing what a domino effect a good, robust transportation infrastructure can very well have on communities, families, and individuals. It, it needs to be seen as more than just a place at the bus stops or the new light, right wheel, light rail system that no one's using. It really needs to be viewed in that multidimensional manner in which they, it truly affects our communities. Again, commerce. We have to talk about it in terms of commerce itself. Job creation. So increasing opportunities for kids to get a better education because they have a transportation system that allows them to get to the school that provides the kind of expertise that they're looking for, the kind of concentration in the subject matter. You know, when we talk about it in those real terms, people get more excited about it. But when all we're talking about is where the bus stop goes, you know, people don't really don't normally necessarily see just how important it is, especially if you're not someone that is normally used to bus. But planning those things very well actually gives you the opportunity to do all of the above. So I, I think it is so important that we have a much more in-depth and human conversation about how uh, in, uh, transportation infrastructure affects all of our lives. 